G'day Nigel Lee from Sax School. In this lesson I want to really quickly show you a great little warm-up technique that you can use if you want to work on your improvising skills, your ear, your fingers, your timing. It pulls kind of all things together and it's dead simple to do. Basically all we're doing here is taking a simple scale uh, and then practicing along improvising over that scale using a backing track. You could do the same thing with a metronome. I've made a really simple backing track and uh, all it is is a single chord and we're going to use an F7 concert chord which means on the tenor saxophone we're using a G major scale and if you're on the al alto saxophone then you're using a D scale. So both those scales are dead simple to use and really what we're trying to do here is work on all of our improvising skills together in a really simple warm-up type exercise. So I'll show you what I mean. Now there's one little trick here that I need to tell you about. Because we're using an F7 chord, which is something you're going to see a lot when you're improvising, we're not using a standard scale. We've actually, what we're going to do is we're going to take the seventh note of the scale and lower it a semitone. I'll show you what I mean. So if you're on the tenor sax, then we are going to use a G major scale, but we're going to use an F natural. Okay, so basically all we're doing is G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. <laughs> Now, if you're on the alto saxophone, you're going to be using a D major scale, but instead of the seventh note being C sharp, you're going to lower it to C natural. So on the alto, we'll be using these notes D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C natural, and D. So if you've got an alto, play along with me now using those notes, uh, and I'm going to play my notes on the tenor. So remember, it's an F sharp and a C natural. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so the notes are really simple. And that's important because what we really need to do here is give ourselves more time to think about our timing and our melody construction and just being creative, right? Because one of the big things that people need to overcome when it comes to improvising is the whole thing about being creative and coming up with new ideas all the time. I have to tell you, creativity, it's like anything else. You need to practice it. And the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. That's why this sort of exercise is important. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop on my backing track, uh, which you can download from my blog. I'll give you a link in a second. And um, I'm going to start off by just playing up and down the scale. And then I'm going to take it a step further and start making up some little melodies um, using just those notes. And then towards the end of it, I'm going to do some other stuff as well, which I'll tell you about afterwards. But there's a couple of little rules to, to think about to make this exercise really uh, more useful to you and you get the most out of it. First of all, you've got to really be rhythmical, okay? You need to listen to that backing track and think about where the beat is, feel the beat in your body, and try and make your melodies so that they line up with those beats, okay? Almost you know, think about starting every line that you play on a beat, okay? You've really got to be rhythmical, even if it means that you make your solo more simple. So important. The second thing is, Keep your melody ideas that you're creating into little chunks. So think about it like sentences. You're going to make a little melody, have a break, another little melody, have a break, another melody, and so on. That's really important because it makes your melody more logical. Uh, it helps you to really think about what you're playing. And from a listener's perspective, it's much better as well. You don't want a massive, long stream of melody that lasts forever. Okay. And the third thing, really quickly to think about, uh, is well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the third thing when we come back. Actually, so I'm going to stick that track on now and have a listen.
Okie dokie, so did you hear how I started off by using just the scale, kept it really simple, and then I made some simple melody ideas just using the scale notes, breaking it into chunks though. And then the third thing I did, uh, which I didn't tell you about before, is I started to take it a step further by adding in chromatic notes in between my scale notes. So this is the third thing that you can do to make this exercise a little bit more challenging, a bit more fun. What I'm talking about here is on the tenor, we would talk about the notes being G, A, B, C, D, E, F natural, and G. But you've got the in-between notes to think about as well. So we've got G sharp, we've got A sharp or B flat, we've got C sharp, we've got our F sharp as well. And if you incorporate those notes, then we've got a massive choice of notes to, to use in our solo. Instead of now I've got So using those chromatic notes as passing notes onto one of the scale notes can give your solo a lot of color. So there you go, there's a quick exercise that you can use to um, incorporate a whole bunch of different skills into your warm up. Within five minutes you've warmed up and you've also worked on a bunch of really important skills that are gonna help you to become incredible at improvising. Now if you wanna download this backing track, you can grab it from my blog. Um, the, there's also a chart there or a worksheet to show you uh, what we talked about in this lesson. So grab that worksheet, grab that backing track, and start using this little warm up in your practice. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel too because there's new lessons coming up on here all the time. And if you wanna learn a whole lot more about improvising, about uh, playing saxophone technique, tips, uh, also learn a whole bunch of great classic jazz tunes, pop tunes, pop solos, then there's hundreds and hundreds of lessons in my uh, lesson library over at Sax School, and that's at mcgillmusic.com. So there's, we've got thousands of people around the world using that lesson library, and there's a ton of stuff in there that will really help you to move your playing onto the next level. Thanks for watching this lesson. I hope it helped you. I'll see you next time.